Hey crew, this is Justine. How are you? Um, today I'm going to talk about my work and how I organize my details. Uh, the main reason that I am showing you my work first is because I don't have the stomach to look at my work after looking at Bison and Frazetta. Anyway, I have um, a few ways to organize details pretty, pretty consistently. Um, one of them is in layers. Um, and you'll see that you know quite a bit up front. But then I'm going to talk about other ways to organize details and deal with details, and other ways to think about details, because details don't always have to mean deep space or a lot of uh, elements in the drawings. Now this is one of my images from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I was working for Dragon Magazine and Dungeon Magazine back then. I think this was from Dragon Magazine, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so what you see here is actually a fairly simple drawing. Um, it's kind of detailed in a sense, and there is some depth arranged in layers. You'll notice the first layer is really that pulley down in the bottom left-hand corner, and then the second layer is that edge of the ship, and then beyond that, you see that sliver of rope? That's like layer number three, followed by layer number four, which is the coil of rope. So is this depth or is this details, right? This is the question you could be asking yourself. I think the answer is it's all of the above. Um, for me, depth and details sometimes kind of merge into one thing or into perhaps two different ways of talking about the same thing or two different things being talked about in the same manner. It's a little nebulous in here. But there are definitely a lot of details in here. For example, if you move back beyond those layers and you get to um, her and the wheel, uh, look at the amount of details on the wheel, especially around the base, and look at the amount of detail on her costuming. Her costume is very detailed, right on the toe rings, anklets, the bone handle on her knife. And I know that you have her, I have her, isolated on a white background. I probably thought about at the time drawing all the slats of wood under her feet, and it would have just been distracting, completely unnecessary. And it would have also taken us away from the kind of art nouveau quality that I was going for. Now, I don't know anything about ships and boats, right? I don't know what all these pulleys, ropes, and nets do. But I would look at boats and just pull a few things here and there and throw those details in to give it a sense of place. You'll notice that the uh, sort of detailed cloud layer back there, I've broken down into abstraction, into psychedelia. This is something I do quite a bit. Okay, this is an interesting drawing because this was towards the end of my career with this particular project. And I'd kind of quit doing it at this point because uh, sales had decreased to such an extent that it was just not worth it. And I had become rather neurotic at this point, to be quite honest with you. And I didn't even finish this drawing because I absolutely hated it. I thought the, the, the anatomy was all wrong. I thought everything was awful. And looking back on it now, it's actually a really nice drawing. Um, so sometimes I think the attitude we have for our drawings says more about our state of mind than the drawings themselves. But let's talk about how the details are arranged. Because this is very detailed, really. But you'll notice that, you know, back here we have our layers of depth, really. But up here, you know, it's a fairly flat area, but the details are still arranged in layers and in groupings. For example, in the bottom you've got the fish heads. Now, I used to collect images of all the things that I thought I would use when drawing. And I don't mean Google images, because if you look up frogs in Google imagery, every artist who looks up frogs is going to be choosing from the same page of frogs. Um, I tend to look through old magazines, even ones that people are just throwing away, like a knitting magazine. It might have some great hand positions in it, you never know. So look through old magazines and start keeping your own clipping. We used to call this a morgue file, where you would collect all these old images of things you like and have them on hand. I happen to have a lot of images of fish, and I love the fish heads here. So you'll see two large grouping of fish heads here and up in here. And there's kind of this layer of fish heads here. Then you've kind of got her and this garbage can on a layer, and then slightly lay a slight layering here. This isn't the Viewmaster popping layering. This is just a little bit of overlap, a little bit of overlap, and then this back here, right? So these three elements are grouped together, and they overlap just enough to create a nice situation with some depth in it, okay? So we've got groupings of fish heads down here. Then we've got the girl and her the details on her. You know, for example, you see the Cinderella sort of uh, detail of her skirt it says something about her. And right above that on her arms, you see this a fetish element of the leather bracelet and then the bangles as well. Um, on her feet, you have 
toe rings and fish scales. This is really Beauty and the Beast sort of symbolism, and this is my fixation in a sense, is fairy tales. Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, uh, a beautiful girl in the muck, in the mire, up against ugliness. Uh, that to me is, is very appealing. And I think any woman who has to deal with this world was to go through the streets and be harassed and be catcalled and, and deal with all that sort of ugliness understands what that feels like. So we have our groupings of fish head and we have our layers. The first layers are very compact, very compact and tight. Layer one, layer two, like layer three, four, five, if you even call those layers. And then look at this layer of wall, right, which I imagine this is being right in front of the wall and that being behind that. Then as we move back in space, layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, layer five, layer six, layer seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven in the deep space. So the background area is definitely using that Hudson River Skull layering, right? And the foreground is more about just layering levels of detail. Now how do I keep this from not getting messy? For one thing, I've definitely broken this up. For another, notice how open all of this is, and then back here, isolated to balance out. Now we go into some detail. Notice in the front I've created this lovely shape of detail and I frequently like to do this with my space. Put a character against a wall or against a series of objects that are in the definite foreground and they're separated. This gives you a sense that she is alone. She's alone in her thoughts. She's alone in this world. She's alone in her work. And beyond her there's this whole world going on that she doesn't feel a part of. I think that's something a lot of artists can relate to. Also, you'll notice that I like to group things with like things. These are like, they're grouped together. These are like, they're grouped together. These are like, they're grouped together. Notice also the space I leave between my details and how against this wall I really simplify. There's not a lot of stuff back here. There's a simple vertical texture of the wood and then there's a simple texture of the wall. And then there's, like I said, breaks here, a simple shape here, you know, this overlap here. This is just simply rendered. There's not piles of crap between this layer of fish and these fish. There's simplicity in between the details. There's simplicity in between the details. There's simplicity in between the details. That's something that really helps keep your details popping, keeps your details isolated, and keeps the image easy to read. There's no doubt in your mind when you look at this image what you're supposed to see first. This is one of my Star Wars images, and it's extremely detailed, and you'll notice also it goes back in depth. So, am I arranging my details in depth, or am I arranging my layers in depth? All of the above, quite frankly. You'll notice also I left areas of rest here, areas of rest here, so that these guys pop, areas of rest here, so this guy pops, area of rest back here, so these guys pop, area of rest on the ground, so this pops, and this pops, and this pops, right? Areas of rest are very important when you're organizing your details. Plus, look at the amount of details here that are all very specific to Star Wars. Very, very specific to Star Wars. In fact, I kind of got busted by um, the art director on this because I was putting a lot of these kind of visors on the robots. And one of the corrections they said is they wanted this kind of visor, this kind of eye on the robot because that's what you see in Star Wars. That's what you would see in R2-D2 on any other droids. So if I had three of these with visors, didn't look appropriately Star Wars. This detail alone gives it that kind of Star Wars element to it. This is not really my favorite Star Wars image. It was the first one I did for Lucasfilm, and um, I was really pretty nervous about it. But the next one is much more successful, in my opinion. And again, everything is grouped and arranged in layers. I think the groupings and the layers are obvious. We have quite a grouping right here. Then we have this flat wall with this one element of the one girl in the foreground. Then we have a grouping here, broken up by some dead space, another grouping here, and then of course a couple layers of space. Now down here, notice that this is really the only extremely three-dimensional tangle on the wall. Most of this is pretty simple and flat on purpose, except for this, which creates a nice overhead sense of space and depth. You'll also notice, I think, that his costume is extremely detailed. Okay, here's one where it's really not very deep, right? So this one is definitely an argument that I have arranged my details more so than the depth in, in layers. Although, you know, clearly these details are creating depth. So 
the two are working hand in hand. The depths and details are working hand in hand here. We've got the layer of bottles, which sets the scene very nicely. And then beyond that, the layer of this sort of bald guy, right? And then you've got this layer, which comes down across over to her and across to this fellow, right? So now we're on to like layer three. And then layer four back in here with these chairs. Layer five, these guys back here. Layer six is these guys here. Layer seven, and then layer eight is really the blackness. And this, those are all the layers that are really going on here. And each one is set up to establish the details. The background details are very clean and very simple, mostly vertical and horizontal. They help to kind of recede. They go backwards, so the girl pops and the men pop. Look how much bolder her outlines are than everything here. Right? That creates a definite sense of depth. Look how this shape back here, she's the only thing of interest really, you know, protruding up here. That's really important. Look how he's kind of leaning out from her, so he's not really touching. They're leaning away from her, so they're not really touching. It's almost like she's giving off this whirlwind of energy that the men are leaning away from or leaning towards. That's kind of interesting, too. Are they, you know, kind of drawn in or sort of like stunned and pulled back. So let's talk about specific details. Details that make this feel more naturalistic, right? The jug, it's not just a jug, it's cracked. It's not just a cracked jug, it's a jug with a roach on it. Ditto here. Ditto a roach here. Broken bottle here. This says something about the danger to her bare feet. The danger to her bare feet is the danger that's, you know, to her in this entire thing. Notice she's like a whirlwind in the center. And all these men are kind of spiraling out around her at different layers. Here's some other great details that I really like to include. Is I want there to be tension in the legs. This is all it takes. These little suggestions. Because muscles in tension um, look different than muscles that relax. Notice I didn't put a bunch of rendering lines on here. Why? Because if rendering lines would have hardened her, would have made her less soft. I want her to look as though her muscles are in tension, not as though she's a man covered in extra lines. Notice the belly. There's not a lot of rendering, just a little reality. Because I don't care how thin we are, girls, there's still going to be this little layer. This is this is sort of a, you mentioned more for men, it's particularly in mainstream comics, who leave all those things out. And they're really important details that help us relate to the figure, I, whether we're male or female. Looking at this, these sorts of details, you know, add an element of reality reality to a beautiful figure. She's no longer just like a baby doll pinup, as you would see in a lot of sexy comics or erotic comics. There's a sense of reality to her body, even though she's an idealized beauty. This one we'll talk about at length later, but I wanted to throw it in because you can definitely see how all of my depth and all of my details are, are definitely arranged in layers. Okay, this one here... Um, Let's talk briefly about the details going on down here. I've got one type of hair, the long hair. Another type of hair, the mustache hair. A third type of hair in the eyebrows. A fourth type of hair in where this is cut. And a fifth type of hair in where the uh, beard stubble is. So I've rendered hair five different ways. This is significant because hair isn't all the same. Mustache hair is not the same as cut hair. It's not the same as long hair. It's not the same as stubble. And you don't want to just use the same rendering lines for everything, okay? Now, up in here, we get into a very detailed drawing that goes back in space as well. How have I broken this down? Clearly, you can see the layers in depth. Depth, 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 depth. depth. Notice how there's a zigzag on top of one another to create depth. There's a zigzagging sense. It just brings you right into space. So that zigzagging is really nice for depth. Now, as far as my layers go, you know, we've got this silhouette layer here. What I've been really obsessed with is trying to kind of marry that world between um, realistic rendering and pattern, and flat decorative stuff like a la Art Nouveau. I've been really trying to walk that balance. And this is someone that somebody like Ivan Earl is really great to look at for. Notice here that this bit of details is its own layer and it's very, very non-naturalistic, very flat and stylized. And then we get to a more naturalistic layer back here that continues all the way through and goes behind the girls who are on another layer. Look at the details here, the details in here, you know. Then back here, in order to keep everything from getting lost, I've isolated them with a lot of white, and I have framed him. The details of the branches, even though they're in different layers of space, this is in the foreground, this is in the middle ground, and this is in the background, still frame him. 
and then these verticals add a sense of strength that draw the eye right to him. Notice the difference between the stylization here and the highly textural observation going on right here. That's really kind of like a hallmark of my work, and that's really what I'm trying to do with, you know, with my work at its best. So I think, again, I'm just going to reiterate that whether or not I'm using layers to create details or depth is they're, they're all merging together, right? It's not really, they're not entirely two separate things, the details and the depth. Okay, the details in this one are come across by careful study. I took photographs at Renaissance fairs of this. I took photographs of the Minstrels of Mayhem. So that's a real guitar chord. I'm not fudging that. That's a real guitar. I'm not fudging that. Those are real details of the costuming that these guys wore. These were great guys singing along. And, you know, I wanted to get the details of, you know, his beard, the particular type of kind of curly beard, the curly hair, the glasses, how the hat is rendered differently than the clothing, you know. You can't render that and that the same way and expect it to read. All the layers of depth here are also the details, right? You've got your foreground layers in this net and then this right here. And then you've got this little grouping of details. Notice that this pattern helps differentiate from the trees and the organic shape here. Using those in contrast with one another helps create a separation, helps create drama, helps create a differentiation in their spatial relationships. Notice the main figure is sort of isolated and then all the little groupings. These people are all doing things. They're having conversations. They're waving to somebody over here. These people are entering the building. These people are watching a jester juggle, right? So that's important in your details. They should be telling a story. Oh, look at, oh, this woman is actually waving to the drunk guy up here. I even forgot I'd drawn that, right? And then you've got, of course, got the details of the buildings back there, separated by layer of hill, another slight layer. These are just slight layers, slight layers. You can do that in your middle ground, in your foreground, just breaking up little, little details of grass to create the sense of depth. Those are depth cues as well as details. Okay, this is one that's truly really not about depth. There's depth in it, but it's not a terribly deep drawing. In this case, the details are arranged symbolically, and they're arranged in layers, okay? So you see right away that everything down here has to do with her story. Everything here has appeared at some point or another within the context of her story somewhere else. Everything, everything in it. Notice that I have the drawers being pulled out at different levels. That only really creates depth. That creates a sense of chaos because this character at this moment in her life is internally in complete turmoil. She's somewhat lost her mind, right? And so the spilled out nature of everything in her room is definitely a reflection of what's going on in her heart and in her mind. Now back here, I've got these overlapped pillows, great details, all of them detailed with different types of patterns. Notice that this is a different pattern than this, and this is a different pattern than this, and this one has no pattern. That's so that those pillows do not get lost in one another. So you'll see that every single detail is arranged in its own sort of layering. There's layering here, layer here, layer here, layer here, and then layers going back here, right? All these little details are layered and wind back in space. This one is based on a painting by MacLeese. Um, which, you know, I've signed down here as such after McLeese. And you notice that details are all on layers. There's not a lot of space here. So this one's definitely details in layers, right? You've got this thing kind of on the same level as her, this kind of in the background, this behind her. These strong horizontals help break up this strong vertical, help to accentuate the strong vertical. So you've got, you know, this layer of the bed, then you've got this layer of this furniture here, and then you've got a simple layer of the windows behind her, which I've greatly simplified from the painting. And you can see here I even put like a halo effect around her. And there's lots of delicious details in her dress. Extremely, um, I have to say so for myself, well-observed folds. Look at the folds uh, in this middle section, and then look at the folds down on her feet when that stupid little play thing disappears. Look at all the little details of the lace work and everything going on as well. And then, of course, the details in her hair. Here's the original painting. You can see what I changed when going from this painting. I kind of crunched everything inward. I moved this inward, moved this inward. I maintained all of this horizontal stuff. 
I eliminated these details up here, crunched everything a little tighter together to make the image work better in black and white for a comic book. And this one has great depth back here and sort of depth here, but it's really, to my eye, it's the details that are arranged in layers more so than the depth. The depth is kind of almost secondary in this one until you get to the deep space. Now, how do I sort of distinguish uh, all of these layers of depth? For one thing, notice that this is all rendered the same way, and it's not rendered the same way as the wood. You can't do that, right? Otherwise, this and this becomes the thing, same thing, it gets lost. How you choose to render is extremely important when you're doing a detailed drawing. Just as when we talked about the hair back here, and um, how all of it was rendered differently according to what kind of hair it is, uh, the same is so here on this image. You'll also notice that these are all just going straight back vertically, and these are all going straight back horizontally, and they're all rendered to look like rough hewn wood. Notice also the black and white uh, line weight variation going on here in the fabric, which is totally different than the rather thin, fine line weights going on here. These line weights are all routine. They're all about the same. They're all routine. They're all about the same. That way they kind of, even though they're in the foreground, as far as the narrative goes, they pop into the, into the back in a sense, and he becomes important. Notice how often I overlap, overlap that glass in front of that chair. I overlap this in such a way that it's not distracting. And then I repeat some of those verticals along through here, and then we have our classic view master layers, layer, 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 rolling back into space. So rendering of texture becomes very important, and you know, layering becomes very important, and arrangement and overlapping becomes very important. Okay, this is uh, from the same series I was working on. Uh, PBS documentary. It was aired uh, nationally, actually. I think it was the last thing that Johnny Cash was involved in, and it was about the Appalachian Mountains. I happen to have a great grandfather who was a moonshiner, so he had some old family photos. Now, you'll notice that um, my details are arranged in very simple layers here the man, the jugs, the wood. Okay? Notice, let's talk about the rendering. Notice how differently this is rendered, the wood back here from here. I make it look like very old used wood by putting these nicks in it, you know, that are going the opposite direction of the wood grain. Same over here. You'll notice that his beard is not rendered in the same way as this fabric. The fluidity of all these marks here and the boldness of these black against white areas really pop in front of these grays. So how am I arranging my details here? in groupings, in three simple layers, and through rendering. This becomes almost a pattern, so it recedes in the background. Notice that? These jugs are something of a pattern. They're less active than these lines, which are going in every possible direction. All the lines on the jugs are pretty much moving horizontal with a few little, you know, areas to suggest dirt and scratches, right? And then, you know, look at the great sort of details in this old leather hat. It's been dirtied, it's been weather-worn, it's been handled, it's got greasy spots on it. All of this is intended to give you a sense of place, a sense of who this person is. Okay, here's one where my details are definitely not arranged in layers as much as they are arranged by abstraction and uh, going into patterning. You'll notice back here that she's in the foreground, really, but this curly hair and this heavy outline around the curly hair it's completely different from the mosaic abstract pattern going on here in the background and then the starburst. Then up here from her head I elevate and I start giving you some nice details of the kind of ironwork up here. And then back here I break it down even more simply into just a graphic shape with all this fabulous sort of crazy hair going on all over here here. And in the panel below it the hair is really where the majority of the details are taking place. Similarly, this one does have some deep space, and the layers are one, two, three, four, five, six, but I don't really consider this to be a layering of deep space as much or a layering of details as much. I've concentrated my details on the main figure. Sure, there are details on the bear, but notice how it's all the same texture. 
It's all the same texture. So the bear falls backwards. Notice also that all of my snow clumps are different sizes. Unlike those detailed drawings that failed earlier, these are all different sizes and none of them are competing with the paw. None of these snow clumps are competing with the paw. Notice how this offers balance to the paw. And this thrust is in direct contrast to this thrust. Now here's where we get into the details. Most of my details are isolated on this figure and there are a ton of them. The beard, the redness in the face, the little flaps of torn leather, the little pouches everywhere, the little belts, the little bits of like leather body armor, and then the fur and the mittens and the little like pockets on the mittens. So in this case, my details are not layered. My details are really just concentrated in one space. There's no space here, but tons of detail, right? So how does this hold together? Simple verticals for the water dripping from the, from the boar's headed man, right? And then organic hair. And then back here, we've got horizontal lines to define the kind of hide, the leathery hide of the monster. And these horizontals recede behind these verticals. Then as we go up here, we get into all the really organic stuff goes straight up through here. Your eye really goes through this area first because all of the stuff is super organic. There is a lot of uh, high contrast right in here, a lot of high contrast in here, a lot of detail work in here. So I'm really combining a high contrast simplicity and highly rendered detailed areas. This one is also not taking place in great space. Uh, you know, it's a very narrow space, maybe four or five feet of space, but there are a lot of details throughout this entire drawing and a lot of different ways of rendering things. Look at her top. It's supposed to be sort of a blousy, loose, flowing, silk sort of top. That was very intentional. Notice how the lines on the top are very active. They're very bold. She really pops that way. Look at the background right through here. These are all the same. And notice how they're kind of cold, even though they're dirty. And compared to the line work going on here, or the line work going on here. Notice also how specific I am in the details to say something about this place and about her experience in this place. Look at that rug. Look how worn it is, how threadbare it is. You can almost feel you know, the way her, her, her bare feet are gonna feel on that sticky, worn surface, right? And look at the details on the stools. These aren't just stools. These are stools that have been electrical tape. not even patched properly. They're just fixed with electrical tape. That really says something about where she is, about what this place is like. And it echoes what's going on here, and what's going on here on the dented background metalwork. And then the details of her clothing. I mean, she's barefoot for one, which is an important detail. But also, look at the details here. It say something about her heritage. And then the details of her putting patches on her clothes. You know, there's, a, there's sort of a young girl's vanity to all the way she's put together. This one is also rather flat in a detail sense. And so my details are not arranged on layers. There's really only two layers here. What the details are arranged are, um, you know, the sort of exaggerated cartoony, the heavy white outline, and then absolute, everything breaks down into complete and total psychedelia. Even psychedelia that's not realistic in space. You know, these ripples in the water are really not obeying the same spatial relationship as, you know, the psychedelic flowing water underneath. So here's where I've broken things down into abstraction in many places. So yes, sometimes I break things down into abstraction, as in this case. Sometimes I choose to render details in an extremely realistic way. This says something important about the sense of space. Sometimes my details are just basically how I render surfaces. Sometimes my details are sort of isolated. Sometimes my details are broken down into patterns of abstract design. Sometimes realistic uh, patterns, you know, this isn't really a pattern, but it becomes one, but it's realistically rendered, whereas this is stylistically rendered. So yes, I think about my details in a number of different ways. And then back to the beginning, where we can see that my details are all arranged in layers. Details and 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 layers and pattern and abstraction. Details and layers, most definitely. We're going to talk a lot about this one, I think, next week.
Details and layers. Details and layers. Details and layers. Details and layers. And details and layers. So you can see details and layers, I would say, is at least 50% of how I think. But there are other ways I think about details as well. So you're not ready to do the homework yet because we're going to um, do the other lecture first. And you're going to see how two other artists deal with their details. But I want you to start thinking about how do you want to approach your details? What do they mean? What do they mean, not just to the character and the narrative, but what do they mean to the visuals? Are they are they trying to create a sense of graphic abstraction? Are they trying, trying to uh, create a sense of realism? Are they trying to create a sense of symbolism? That's it, you guys. Uh, new video coming up in a little while, but I just wanted to get this one going for you. And by all means, please, throw some comments and some questions in about this video. So far, we haven't done that. We've discussed other people's artwork, but let's discuss this uh, lecture. Tell me what you think. Tell me maybe what you've observed that I've missed. Tell me maybe what I've said that has kind of made you go, oh, oh, I never thought of that. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>